Hi, I'm Kevin, and welcome to Making Sawdust, the channel all about using what you got and not what you ain't. If you're a DIYer and you don't own all the fancy tools, you came to the right place. So click the subscribe button, stick around, give me a like at the end of this video, and let's get started. So I'm down here today and I'm building benches in my basement for my wood shop and I'm using recycled 2x4s. Uh, this is a rental house and I don't want to spend a lot of money in outfitting my wood shop down here because we might not be here in a couple years. And I'm probably not going to take the benches with me. So recycled lumber is the way to go. And what I've run into is i got to pull quite a few nails. This is framing lumber that I pulled from a salvage house. And I've got some nails sticking out, some nails bent over, and I wanted to share with you guys a couple tips on how to pull nails more efficiently. One of the first tips I wanted to share with you guys is you noticed I use the side of my hammer and my pry bar right here. Most good framing hammers have a corrugated head and you don't want to beat up that head. That's actually what controls your nail when you're driving your nail. So I don't want to hit it like that because obviously you can see my corrugated head is a little dimpled or a little uh, mushroomed over. But this hammer's been around for a long time, so one of your first tips, use two tools and use them to your advantage. Now like right here, we want to use both tools to my advantage. If I want to just use this pry bar, awful hard to pry that lumber. I gotta put a ton of weight in there. And I actually have to hold this down too. So if you have this framing lumber and you're trying to pull this apart and it's attached to something like the wall of your house, that's actually gonna help you provide some good leverage. But like in this case, my board's flopping around here, so I wanna use both my tools. Okay. You can use two hammers, two pry bars, a pry bar and a crowbar. It's going to be quite effective that way. I think what you've also maybe have noticed is I'm using my hammer sideways like this. Rather than this way. You would think that that's how that claw should be operating and that leverage, that fulcrum on your hammer. Actually, it's a lot easier running it sideways like that. Now one of the next tips, and this may seem pretty obvious to you guys, you want to pound those nails out as far as you can. Obviously flip your board over. Now, we think that this is the way to pull your nail. And it does work. But it takes quite a bit of force. And after a while, your wrist is going to start hurting. Your palm is going to start hurting. And you notice that this board is just sitting here flopping around in the wind. Now what I'm going to show you, obviously these two nails were bent. These other nails were quite straight. I 
very little force if I'm using that leverage a different way with my hammer. I'll pull you up close and show you that. Now certainly we could use a crowbar, but you see what just happened is my nail goes flinging across the room. Now for DIYers, we're probably working on our driveway, you know our vehicles are pulling in and out of our driveway. We don't really want to lose our nails, so you put a lot of force and as soon as that thing releases, that nail goes flying. So when I pull nails, it's a much more controlled event because I don't want those nails in my driveway. We also have these wonder bars, which I really like. But then again, that thing goes flying and you really can never forecast when that nail is going to release. So again, stick your hammer in there sideways, use the force of it. There you go. Very rarely that thing's going to go flying across the room. So thanks for joining me today, guys. And I hope a couple of the tips I shared with you today are useful and informative. I want to be an inspiration and a motivation for you guys. Uh, use repurposed lumber. You don't need all the fancy tools. Use what you got, not what you ain't. Why don't you go ahead and visit my shop tour video right there. And I, I will share with you some of the challenges that I am facing by building my basement wood shop in a rental house. And as always, get out in your shop, make some sawdust.